Uh, let's start with this. Uh, <laughs> this, I think for some people this is a little bit baffling, but I do think that what we are seeing here is a is the playing out, we're watching in real time the development of a, um, I think it goes beyond a tactic. I think we're getting into sort of strategy area a little bit. Um, and it is not unrelated from the assault on uh, on Gawker that we saw, and we've seen this now in the media. The, the right is starting to become... I mean, do you remember there was a time... Now, you have to go way back. This is probably eight years ago or nine years ago, like ancient history now. Uh, and never mind 10 or 15 years ago, the idea of anybody suing anybody was a complete anathema to the conservative movement. It was just, you're disgusting using the courts in that way, suing people. And that seems to be like now, like literally the sort of weapon du jour. And, and I do mean weapon because none of these suits so far have been necessarily successful. Uh, what we're seeing is the really just what money can do in the context of lawsuits. I mean, one of the things that I've learned in my years in covering all the, uh, the tort uh, cases that I've covered and... Uh, in talking and knowing Mike Papantonio, who's uh, a, a big uh, trial lawyer, is that corporations have understood this for a long time. The way that they would win suits is simply by outspending the other side, by literally a war of attrition. And certainly in like Gawker's case, th there was nothing that they were ever going to be able to do that would get them out from under the massive amount of legal bills that were going to edit their way if they were going to continue to try and litigate this stuff over and over again. Um, and this seems to be, there seems to be some strategy here where, A, we can intimidate companies, corporations, individuals with lawsuits. Maybe we'll win some, maybe we'll lose some. We're going to cost them money in terms of lawyers, but we're also going to create a narrative, right? Like Donald Trump sort of gave away the game here when he kept saying, like, I'm going to sue all those women who um, who claim that I sexually assaulted them. Now, those uh, suits never happened, but they were talking points that established his um, credibility or the credibility of his uh, denials. Now, it didn't work for everybody, but again, their plan is that none of these things have to work for everybody. They have to work for the base that supports Donald Trump. So here is Devin Nunes, who has filed a $250 million lawsuit against Twitter. I think just for the purposes of maintaining this, this narrative that there's such a thing as shadow banning remember they had the shadow banning hearings uh i like remember maria Bar so i also. tweeted out it got no life it got no life and i know that's something that my followers and viewers care about there there is a quality to this let me just like and just understand i'm not making an analogy although i think there is some coincidental crossover but you know how the uh white supremacists um, the reason why they they hate the Jews, even though they're white, is because the Jews are the ones who are supposedly uh, the race traders who are allowing um, people of color to succeed. Like that, that that's like the calculation that's built into this. This whole thing about shadow banning is part of like their narrative. The right's narrative is to, like why. Nobody seems to agree with us <laughs> or why we're not being retweeted. Oh, it's because there's some other underhanded plan that is uh, that is being taken place. Some tactics that are beyond that are outside of fairness. Like I my free speech. This is we're in the intellectual dark Twitter, right? Because we're shadow banned. This is all part of their narrative that they build when, in fact, none of it's true. Well, how is it that every day 
Uh, there's conservatives that are being banned. So, you know, look, they don't want to call it shadow banning. That's fine. They can call it whatever they want to call it. But the fact of the matter is, is people could not see my tweets. Okay. So now, but if you move forward, if you get emails from Twitter, it's constantly left wing stuff. It's constantly fake news stuff. So I think if Twitter wants to be in the public square and they don't want to be a content developer, they should come clean, give us all your algorithms. How is it possible that I can be attacked relentlessly hundreds of times a day by fake accounts that they claim in their, in their terms of service should not be there? So I guarantee you, if I put something out that was sexually explicit or attacked someone personally, they would, they would stop it. They would say, this is a sensitive tweet. They, they never did that to any of the people that, that were coming after me or other conservatives. So, so this is Devin Nunes on, uh, on Hannity basically coming up with this massive conspiracy theory that Twitter has an algorithm that sends uh, only emails pushing liberal stuff and uh, in, in, in some way like been zeroing in on Devin Nunes. Like this is some uh, multi-dimensional chess here, where Twitter is like the people of the Twitter are like, we've got to silence Devin Nunes. Yeah, respect Jack Dorsey. Yeah, watch out. I had no idea that Jack Dorsey was so conscientious. But I thought he was just an enabling idiot. How much? Right accounts. How much have we seen this be an issue on the right? The, the, you know, uh, Eric Altman coined the phrase "working the refs," and that's what they did with the media, and now they're doing it with the social media, right? Facebook, Twitter, they're all going to have special select committees that are basically going to be like uh, the Republicans are in power. We've got to, uh, you know, Devin Nunes has to be the we have to come up with an algorithm, make sure that Devin Nunes isn't ratioed every time he puts out his stupid stuff. But here's here's Sean they're Hannity. Trying. Oh, yeah. Here's Sean Hannity. And, you know, they're trying to seem like they're serious when Hannity drops the reading glasses down the nose. To talk to Devin Nunes about how Devin Nunes, they're, he's in the intellectual dark Twitter. Do have a high bar. We all need that because if you're a public figure, you need actual malice and what's known as a reckless disregard for the truth or else I would sue people every hour of every day. But it's harder. Um, it's not like in the case of the Covington High School kid. Tell us about the suit. Yeah, so this is the first of many, Sean. And what we're doing here is we're actually going after Twitter first because they are the main proliferator. Hold on, go back. I want to I want to uh, point something out. Rewind it from the beginning, right there. I would sue people every hour of every day, but it's harder. Um, it's not like in the mm -hmm. case of the Covington High School kid. Tell us about the suit. Yeah, so this is the first of many, Sean. And what we're doing here is we're actually going after Twitter first because they are the main proliferator and they spread this fake news and the slanderous news. So if you look at the lawsuit, I think nine people can go and look at it on Fox News. Pause it. Uh, it's you know, if I was Twitter and I heard uh, this guy go on television and say that my business proliferates slanderous news, the implication being that, you know, we're doing this on purpose. I don't know. I might sue them for uh, attempting to uh, harm my business. You just need to prove that one of those things was like basically true and then it wouldn't be slander, right? That he mm. said. Look at it on Fox News. Uh, it's all there. But what we're, the case we're basically making is, is this was an orchestrated effort. Uh, so people were targeting me. There were anonymous accounts that were that were developed. And look, there's not supposed to be these accounts aren't supposed to exist. Twitter says that they don't have accounts that do this. So, like I said, this is the first of many lawsuits that are coming. But it but there were several fake news accounts, whether it was regard to the Russia investigation or to me. And we have to hold all of these people accountable because if we don't, our First Amendment rights are at stake here. This isn't 20 years ago, Sean. What's happening is, is, that, is that Twitter becomes the gaslighting for all of the news. And when they're regulating us, they're regulating what people can see on my tweets, which they've done, and then they're, they're proliferating out things that they agree with, with the algorithms that they develop. Pause it. They need Does this guy, no this evidence guy, for well, first anything of all, well, first he's of all, asserting. It's first of all, amazing. Is this the first time that he's used like the English language? They're proliferating out. What? What? Is, what is it like the gibberish that he's talking about? There was a lot of proliferating. Slanderous out. news. Proliferating. There was slandering. No, that still makes out. more sense. 
your Trump milk brain impression made more sense than Devin Nunes. Wait, continue on. Like the, they're they're shadow banning him. They're they're inhibiting the the full expression of his tweets. His tweets just want to. They just they just want to fly. They have a lot. They need to express. They've clipped themselves. the wings of his tweets. Stop blocking my expression. My tweets, which they've done, and then they're they're proliferating out things that they agree with with the algorithms that they develop. They need to come clean. They're, they're not banning, a public right? square. They are content developers. That's a shadow banning. I've been shadow banned too. Wait, Twitter is not a public square. I've been I've been doing it wrong. This I've been is just like going outside and yelling stuff. It's not a public square. They've been proliferating. If they want to be a content developer, what is that? I don't know yet any any of that even means. What is a content developer? I mean? think he's kind of co-opting the um, antitrust critique of like Amazon being a platform and uh, like a producer at the same time. Like they're 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 stealing a lot of these different sorts of like. But, words. but Twitter doesn't have like Twitter's not putting out its own content. Well, they've got like he seemed to imply that they he's like they said they don't have accounts like this. They've got the but, news section that they're always trying to trick you into clicking on, but I won't. But I mean, are they they may drive you to certain places, but they're not in the business of like he is he suggesting that Twitter is actually making these bot accounts as because they're trying to inhibit his First Amendment right? I mean, why well, don't know hard to his, tell. Yeah, that is what he's implying with actually literally no evidence. Well, but this is this is what gives away the game here for uh, the Republicans. And it it really <laughs> I mean, they're marshalling these forces. I don't know. Maybe it's just a campaign tactic or maybe it's. Um, Maybe Nunez is trying to sort of protect himself. He thinks he might be have some type of liability in the future. But like they are, this is this seems to me to be a preemptive move to tell his own folks that there is, you know, don't believe anything you're talking about, because Twitter's actually got a whole operation that not only keeps you from hearing my explanation, but they have bots that are specifically there to attack Devin Nunes. Well, speaking of bots, remember Nunes was pushing the whole hashtag release the memo thing uh, like a year or so ago, and it turned out that that hashtag was driven largely by bots that like certain outfits would identify as like Russian bots, but who knows? They're bots, and they're pushing release the memo. The uh, it, It's a very strange... I have a feeling we're going to have a better sense, but it's honestly, we're not going to fully appreciate what this was about for another year or two. I, I think it's one of those situations. Now, of course... Here right, is, Devin. here are some examples of the uh, Devin Nunes that he says are bots that have um, a very creative bot that that are uh, suppressing Devin Nunes's free speech. And as far as I can understand, Devin Nunes's charges. This is as far as I can understand, uh, he is claiming that Twitter is has some type of algorithm that actually creates these bots that are targeting Devin Nunes. So here's one uh, entitled Devin Nunes's mom. And uh, <laughs> is she disappointed in him? Fake and, news, not my real mom. Right. Yeah. Not, not my Devin real Nunes mother real. does not make human centipede jokes about me. And, Sean. Uh, Devin Nunes's mom seems to be responding to uh, Natasha Bertrand. She is a uh, journalist who writes about the, uh, the uh, Russia connections with the administration. And De Devin Nunez's mom, not the real Devin Nunez's mom, but the uh, the one on Twitter that ostensibly, according to Devin Nunez, has been created by Twitter. Um, it writes, uh, here's a helpful diagram to explain their relationship. And there are three individuals, Putin, Trump and Nunez. That's the names on there. They're not you can't you wouldn't be able to identify them except for the names because they're all like sort of like uh, just sort of stick figure type of things. NPCs. Uh, they're what? Non-player characters. Like Non-player characters, right? And uh, they, uh, they're, they're each um, on all fours, lined up as if they were butt sniffers, like dogs almost. And might be a bit worse. Yeah, they're doing more than sniffing. It's those It's the butts. human centipede. The human is a very high. Well, I'm not familiar with so what I the kids are doing. I just want to say what's interesting about some... this, and maybe Devin Nunez has a point because he clearly has to work things out with his mom here. But I do want to say that Devin Nunez's mother, from what I can tell from watching, looking at this, incredible graphic design skills for yeah. someone in her age cohort. 
but highly vulgar movie taste. Yeah, and it some... does kind of surprise me. And I actually can, I can relate to Devin Nunez on this. If my mother did a human centipede graphic targeting my political party and myself, I think that would be pretty upsetting. Here's Devin Nunez um, uh, replying to Fox News, Devin Nunez himself and the FBI, uh, saying, uh, Devin Nunez, this is again Devin Nunez's mom, uh, your district is looking for you, question mark. Are you trying to obstruct a federal investigation again, question mark. You come home right this instant or no more Minecraft, exclamation point. Right. Now. Stop being MAGA, you little bastard. I, this is. Uh, now, I'm starting to get the feeling. And maybe it's because uh, I'm inclined that way because of my uh, background in comedy. But this might be a parody account. Wait. You don't you don't think that this is a, I thought his mom was a Democrat. Oh, that was that's what a lot of people are saying. Oh, because I just thought the whole Minecraft thing, because uh, my you know, I Devin Nunes does not strike me as a Minecraft guy. Could be a little bit. But uh, no, maybe I, don't. I had heard from many people that Devin Nunez's mom was a very talented graphic designer and a Democrat. Here is uh, Devin Nunes uh, um, uh, responding to uh, Donald Trump for bringing much needed attention to our flawed environmental policies. Forests should be managed properly. And water should be allowed for farmers to grow food to feed people. And Devin Nunes's mom again says these two geniuses want to teach us all about environmental science. Never mind the fact that both of their expertise put together is worth worth less than a bag of dicks. When we have questions about hookers or Vegas strip clubs, we'll call you. Okay, Devin Nunes? That's pushing it a little that bit. That just seems... That's just okay. he's pushing it, and especially, I mean, God, keep some things in the family. Right. <laughs> it I just think seems... a bag of dicks would be worth a lot, actually, if you could get one together. I would imagine the, the just the effort involved in getting a bag of dicks would be difficult, uh, but why would Devin Nunes' mom uh, imply, and it's not explicit, but just imply that... Um, uh, that these two knew about uh, Vegas strip clubs or hookers in such a way, uh, or Devin Nunes did. That's fascinating. Um, so here is part of the lawsuit defended Devin Nunes's cow. Nunes is a farmer, right? Oh, okay. Yes, he owns well, farms uh, in Iowa. There, that was a very bizarre story, right? right? Yeah. Uh, a person who, with Twitter's consent, created. Oh, this is the idea that Twitter uh, gave their consent specifically to a parody account created and maintains an account on Twitter at Devin Cow for the sole purpose of attacking and defaming Nunez. Uh, Devin Cow has 1,204 followers, like Devin Nunez's mom, Devin Nunez's cow. I'm reading, incidentally, from the lawsuit. Devin Nunez's cow engaged in a vicious defamation campaign against Nunez that lasted over a year. Devin Nunez's cow has made published and republished hundreds of false and defamatory statements of and concerning Nunez, including the following. Uh, Nunez is a treasonous cow poke uh, is one of those. I have to think that a judge is going to look at this and go, excuse me, counsel. Are you telling me that um, Devin Nunez had no idea this is uh, satire? Like, are, is society supposed to take Devin Nunez's cow as a serious uh, source of material. On I mean, Devin I Nunes? understood the mom one because I still kind of think it is his mom. I don't maybe I'm missing something here, but that's clearly a joke. Well, cows can't yeah, the cows, type. Right. Well, you know, his mom could be a super talented graphic designer who doesn't like her son's politics and thinks he's less worthy than a bag of dicks. That is possible. But the idea that a cow would have the ability to just even hit single keystrokes on a keyboard is virtually unheard of. Now, yeah. I guess it's possible that as a cow walks through a field, you could get some type of like stick stuck in one of their cloven hooves. And then in that instance, just and that would be lucky. Or maybe the cow's like, oh, I've got this thing stuck in my hoof. This is horrible. Uh, you know, I don't want this here. But on the flip side, I will be able to type now and I could start a Twitter feed because I have this unique ability as a cow to actually like hit one 
um, keyboard. It right. would go something. You, know, you'd may, you might you well, think some of these like jokes that. might be a little tacky, but they take a long time to type <laughs> out by position. There's also the case you don't know if Jack Dorsey has been invested in sort of bovine neural networks to help get cows onto the onto the platform. The way to he transcend would. the industrial abuse of animals is to get them wired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if there's more connectivity, they can't be beef. <laughs> it's it's the same stuff as uh, Peter Thiel's case against Gawker, right? Because he didn't really sue them for outing him, although he made a big deal about that. He didn't really sue them for mistreating Hulk Hogan. He wanted them gone because they made fun of him. And Hi, Mr. Hogan. He doesn't think people should be allowed to make fun of Hi, the powerful. Mr. Hogan. And like, it's ironic too because Twitter is actually taking steps to protect the powerful as we speak from getting ratioed when they say dumb things. This is, uh, and, and I'm quite convinced that this is um, a part of, at least part of the uh, motivation here is we're going to work the refs. And the idea is that uh, regardless of what's going on in Twitter, we're just going to keep throwing suits at you. And regardless of whether these suits have any basis, no one wants to be a company that's getting sued often.